this way for Tom Sheridan. I'm going to keep that. I'll put it in my office. I think we'll probably just get started because you know, crack on. It's lovely to see everybody. Thank you for, uh, for signing up for this workshop. Um, I would have got, you know, after, after how it's quite so. Um, what? A couple of years. This is co construction. Sorry, no. no it's fine. It's <laughs> no, no, no. great. No, no. Sorry. Okay, well, co construction is um, uh, an approach to teaching which. I've been working on in my school for the last few years, and I'll be honest with you, it's not exactly sort of taken over my school, uh, because it's quite a specialist approach, which requires a certain kind of um, courage. But I'm in the process of trying to persuade my school, more of my teachers, to embrace this, and we do, there are a number of us doing it. So it's at the kind of pioneer stage. But I actually think, and I know from other people um, who have tried this out in their school, that it is a quite exciting and engaging way to teach. And um, I'm on a bit of a mission to encourage more people to try it. And hopefully by the end of the session you'll have a, an understanding of kind of what it is and also how you might go about it. And, and you'll have the you'll think, well I'll have a go at that. So basically um, it it comes with a, a, a like a lot of things. Hi, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, come on, yeah, let's keep going in here. Some seats over here, you can just come and join us. And there's a, you might have to stand up. Sorry, here you are. Oh. <laughs> um, like a lot of things, uh, I was talking about this earlier when I was, I was talking to some little leaders from Cleveland earlier, that you have to have a bit of a philosophy for, behind things when you go about them. It's not just about the tasks and the strategy, it's about a, a mindset. And I think co construction is only works if you have this mindset. What you're trying to do is not pass the exam, that's what you're driving for, you're trying to create le make the learning process as challenging and enriching as possible on the way to um, passing the exams, and so that, that, that flows from it. And this is a, a model I use but to describe um, gifted and talented thinking, that you're trying to not just give people a set pattern of things, but you're trying to create opportunities for them to go beyond that. It's also um, another, another analogy I use a lot is the skateboarding. I've, I've written about this on my blog. But basically, it's co construction is the process I've come to to deliver in this in my lesson as a physics teacher. If you look at people who are teaching themselves skateboarding, they, um, they teach themselves more effectively than if they had skateboarding lessons. They, they, they feedback, they try things out, they don't ask permission. They repeat the same thing over and over again. They decide what to do next. They have total ownership over the process. It's creative. And they learn it at a high level because it's, they repeat it and they get involved in it. And it's theirs. They own it. Whereas in skateboarding lessons, you, the teacher puts them in on it because of, you have to worry about safety. And it automatically, when you're the teacher, people defer to you and your greater knowledge and ask permission. And kids are massively permission-seeking. I don't know if you find this, but I do. If you, are, if you say to kids, um, go left or right, they'll say, which, is, which, which one is correct? Or if you say, make, make, um, make a cartoon strip to explain this concept, or do, a, or do a, uh, a PowerPoint, something traditional, or make a website, they'll still want to know which is the right one, or which is best, or which do you prefer. If you genuinely say, no, I don't really mind which one you make, they find that hard. And, Making kids have choices is something which co-construction delivers. So I've written a bit about this, you can see more. And we're competing with the noise from next door. Should we close the door now? I get to the heart of it. So co-construction is, does, I've written a bit about it on these learning lessons, you can read about this later. And the first time I did it, I started doing it with year seven, and it went really well for a couple of years, and I, and I gave myself the challenge to do it with a GCSE class. Because in my school, I found the teachers weren't prepared to take it on unless I could show that it could deliver results. And so I'm about to find out because my year 11s have just been through two years of doing this with me and we get our results in, in August. Um, and it's, yeah, I'm nervous, but um, I'm optimistic. So basically, you know, we're doing in, uh, three specific projects in year, one. year 10 physics, which is me. Lots of work in RE where lots of teachers are doing it and we're developing that and various other spin-offs in different 
English teachers are trying to get languages teachers um, and drama and various other things. And in ICT, we have a whole project which is now quite developed where the teachers are students um, and the whole thing is student. Uh, I'll, I'll get through the blurb, I think, because this is basically a, to show that it, it's relevant. This is our teaching and learning statement. That's the whole teaching and learning statement for my school. And we, uh, co construction delivers a lot of things. It does deliver rigor and scholarship because the kids find that they, by teaching the topics, they get a really good understanding of them. It does give them time to reflect and enjoy because they love doing it and the passion that they bring to them doing the teaching. And also, this is a personal learning journey. We think it's important for kids to decide what the scheme of work should have in it and how to deliver it. So, what is it? I, I, I don't know. I'm not, I'll make these available to people. I don't really want to get stuck in. This is their reference later, the aims. There's lots of aims. It's exciting. But what, is, what happens? Essentially, you, instead of just saying, you know, we're doing this topic and going through step, from step to step, you start off by negotiating what it is you're going to teach. So I'm, I'm planning, I've got year nine next year. I know my timetable already. I'm going to be teaching year nine for science. And my first few lessons will be like this. Here's the, here's the content. Here's the syllabus for year nine. What should we do first? You know, what, where would you like to start? And let's agree a pattern. So this is how I'm going to go about it with my year nines. We'll look at the whole scheme that we need to deliver in terms of content. And through discussion and negotiation, we'll agree an overview. And I'll find out from that process what they've done before, what they're interested in, what they'd like to do first. And we'll also discuss a sensible sequence. And what do we think? If we do that first, will it work better before or after, and that's part of the thinking, the sequencing of ideas. And we'll have an agreed, um, an agreed scheme of work for the class which they've had input into. We'll then allocate responsibilities. We'll say, okay, we can't all teach all of the lessons, but who wants to take responsibility for these? And we'll form teams. So in the class, we'll form teams of students who will be responsible for certain units within the year. Then we'll have some lessons before we get started where we'll prepare. So, okay, your guys are responsible for this topic, and we'll do research, preparation, writing lesson plans, and all sorts. Um, and then we'll get on with it. So we have to do some initial investment, then we'll get on with it. So working with each of the teams, what I'll be doing is I'll be saying, okay, you're the first guys up, let's meet on a regular basis, we'll have little five-minute chats here and there, talk through the lessons, we'll also do a bit of training, uh, what, what, will, what makes good lessons, we'll discuss that with the whole class, what lessons do you love, what lessons do you hate, we quickly agree that this isn't about a load of PowerPoints, that we're not preparing presentations, we're preparing lessons, we're preparing activities. And they'll devise activities, questions, assessments, homework tasks. And then as they're delivering the lessons that they deliver, I'm also delivering some as well. I'll do that bit, you do that bit, and they'll come back to me, and then maybe if you guys do this, and we all agree it, which practicals as a science teacher would you like to, to run? Okay, so you'll need to go to the science technicians and order the equipment and discuss with that. And then that's your lesson, it's your lesson. And we get into it. And when it's really their lesson, I'll show you some pictures, it really is their lesson. I don't prepare anything. I turn up and it's their lesson. And a couple of times we have cross words because they didn't prepare. It's your lesson, guys, where's the stuff? <gasps> we forgot. And I expect them to have that level of ownership. When it works fantastically, which it does a lot of the time, they, they, they bring it. I'll show you some pictures. And then we evaluate it as we go in, how did that lesson go, what could you do better next time. There's no point giving kids a one-off lesson, because it's not going to be great, is it? Imagine if you only ever got taught by teachers who had just done one lesson, you need to get better. So it's more than just a one-off thing, it has to be a series, so they get better at the teaching. And by the end, I'll tell you what, it's absolutely extraordinary. You've got year 10s or year 11s or year 8s saying, okay, guys, in your pairs, discuss this question, taking a K and then you know, they'll do all this, here's your homework, here's your feedback, and they'll do it all just like a really good teacher would, because they know how to. Plus they see lots of other great teachers around their school life, and they borrow ideas. So we evaluate it continuously. Okay, so this is what I, I did last year, we did, we did exactly this, um, and they did lots of things, they did the demos, they did the marking, they did some photographs. So, this is Show. This is just a bit of standard direct instruction. He's actually, in this case, going through. That's a that's a visualizer. He's looking at a question which he wanted them to do. He's going. He's explaining the answer. 
Um, that's him and George. They, this is tick and take time where they're doing the forces, and they were running the demonstration, which I would normally do, saying this is how you measure acceleration um, using a tick and take timer, and they worked out the methodology. Um, then they did the class experiment version, the next lesson, and they were then, the whole team of them, were experts in using the tick and take timer and the method for calculating acceleration from it. And they explained the whole thing. They, they were then able to help the other kids in the class. So for me, it's brilliant because I've got like a team of helpers. So in a class like this, you've got four people going out <coughs> helping, getting all the kids set up. Because they spent an hour in the lunchtime preparing. They got ready, they ordered the kit. Then they set them the tasks, they collected the books in, they assessed them, they would give them the marking, they divide them up. Four people in the team is quite good because they only have a few books to mark each. It's a lot better than me doing it. And this is George giving the books back and explaining his comments to the people that he's giving the books back. This is a real ownership. They love it. They love giving the books back that they have assessed. And the, the, the comments are as good as the ones I was writing because they knew what they were looking for and they had criteria. So I find that I do a lot less marking than usual because the students do a lot of it. And a lot of the tests they devise are they can assess them. So it's very you know, powerful in that way because they're learning that assessment and the students feel that the feedback they're getting is good. We have a system for giving feedback in physics generally and they model the same one. So it doesn't look that much different from the type of feedback I give. So they're fully integrated in that way. This is when it, it, it just went stratospheric. I didn't realise they could do this until it happened, which is, we're, this is halfway through the first term of year 11, where we've been doing this co-construction for over a year, but this is getting serious now. The exams are coming up, it's, it's a two-year course on IGCSE. And I actually said to them, we've got to make sure that we finish the syllabus in time to revise. And the next day, Taron sent me this by email. He said, uh, I think this will work, this is, this is the beginning of year 11, these are all the topics we haven't done yet, which is his list, this is his piece of work, and here's all the lessons, he's actually he typed them all in. He only has three lessons in Fortnite, physics, GCSE, typed them all in, and he's mapped out his plan. Holidays, do a test, do some revision, fantastic. So we print, we stuck this in everybody's book and we said, well let's stick to Taron's plan as much as possible because it seems, looks like it could work. So he's so involved in the whole process that he feels able to plan the entire learning for the whole class as a suggestion. It's only like a suggestion, but we just said, is this going to work for everybody? You know, the nuclear people is a bit shorter than they would have liked, but we realised it was, we are running out of time and so on, and we needed to, to get ready. So this was fantastic. We also, I've also had revision guides, which I didn't ask for, incredible resources produced. They feel so much ownership of this that they produce stuff for their class. They feel they're responsible for delivering the material, so they they prepare. And at the end, when we were revising, we went back to all the original groups, and they led the revision for their respective sessions. So I'm expect just going back to the physics. That's, but um, I'm expecting um, my exam my results this year, and you know. My, I, I think they'll do at least as well as any of the other physics classes, yeah. but you know, it, at the same time they'll have learned how to prepare lessons, how to teach, and some of the some of the ideas they come up with for lessons were, were great, much better than the normal. Year seven RE. Let's have a look at that, like, how that works. It's a similar idea. We start off with deciding what the topic overview is, but here it's a little bit freer because you don't have the exam to worry about. And RE can be all kinds of things. You can kind of make it what you want. It's a good way to start. But what we found with year seven, they just took it. So this is a sort of simple thing. You know, you start instead of having a scheme of work. This is my very first ever attempt at co-construction. So they kept it's a bit strange. An introductory unit on Christianity. And we have a scheme of work. I'm a non-specialist RE teacher. So I just said to them, what do you, what would you put in a year seven unit on Christianity? And we do a bit of a brainstorm, and then we agree the sequence. And we came up with, and I just looked at that and I looked at the scheme of work. It was exactly the same. It's like, well, I mean, you can plan. You're only 11, and you can plan an art scheme of work. It's the same, even the sequence and everything. And I realised that they knew so much about it already. Well, some of them did. This is the whole point. Some knew stuff that other people didn't know. And 
this is a good way of finding out what they already could do, because they wouldn't say they needed to learn something if they already knew it. 